Bubbles, I didn't know you could program. Yeah, but I can only make silly stuff like games. This is amazing! If you nurture your talent, you could be a software engineer or work for NASA! You too can be a creative coding whiz, just like Bubbles the Powerpuff Girl, by learning some simple and fun computer science concepts. With a little help from the Powerpuff Girls, I'm going to show you how to make a game to test your reactions using the visual programming language Scratch. You can access Scratch by visiting scratch.mit.edu in a browser window on a computer, laptop or tablet device connected to the internet. Like I've done, you can create your own login to be able to save and share your projects with others. In fact, I've already shared my finished game, so if you want to go and look at the code or remix my project to make it better, you can do so by searching for me, Geek Girl Diaries. The wonderful artists at Cartoon Network have uploaded Powerpuff Girl characters and backgrounds to Scratch that you can use. Click See Inside to access the project. Here you'll be given the option to remix it. Click on Remix and a copy of the project will be made and added to your area. Let's start editing the copied project by first changing the title. Give your game a unique title or call it Powerpuff Girls My Reaction Game. You can see there are a lot of characters or sprites as they are called in Scratch on the stage area. You can go ahead and delete or hide any that you do not wish to use in this project. To do this, right click with your mouse and click Delete or hide. Remove all the sprites you do not want right now. I'm only going to use Bubbles, Buttercup, Blossom and some buildings. I can see the sprites I want in the sprite area, but they are not showing on the stage area right now. Right click on the sprite you want to show and click show. Now the Powerpuff Girls are on the stage, I can move them around using my mouse and place them where I like. You can also change the background of the stage by clicking on the background icon next to the sprites and then backdrops. You can select the one you like most with your mouse. Once you are happy with your sprites and background, it's time to start programming them. In Scratch we do this by first selecting the thing you want to code. Here I've selected Bubbles Sprite. I want her to say hello when I start the program by clicking on the green flag. So I need an event block called when green flag clicked, which I drag into the scripts area for bubbles. Next I need to add a looks block that says hello for two seconds. Drag and clip it onto the first block. This makes a script. You can run the script by clicking the green flag. You see that bubbles now says hello for two seconds. You can remove blocks by dragging them back to where you got them from with your mouse. Okay, let's start making our game. Click on the building sprite and drag a when green flag clicked events block onto the stage. Next, click on data and make a variable block. Name it time and ensure that for all sprites is checked and click OK. You'll notice that some new blocks have appeared. Drag the set time to zero block onto the stage and connect it to the first block. Click on sensing and find the ask and wait block, then add it to your script. Change the text inside to select your Powerpuff Girl by typing their name. We can test the script so far by clicking on the green flag. You'll notice that a question box has appeared on the stage. This is where players will select their Powerpuff Girl, hence the question that we asked. Nothing happens right now because we need to add the code blocks to make the selection based on the player's answer. We need to add some conditions to our script now. Click on the control box and drag an if-then block and connect it to the script. To set the condition, click on operators and drag the equal sign block and drop it inside the if block hexagon shape. Next, go back to sensing and drag the round block called answer and drop it into the left hand side of the equals operator block. In the right hand space, after the equal sign, type bubbles. Your condition now reads, if the player's answer is bubbles, then do something. We have not programmed the something yet, so let's do that now. Click on events and drag the broadcast block and place it inside the if then block. Click on the drop down arrow inside the broadcast block and create a new message called bubbles. 
We now need to create similar conditions for each of the girls. The easiest way to do this is to right click on the blocks you want to copy and click duplicate and add the copied blocks to the bottom of the script. Now you only need to change the answer to buttercup and create a new broadcast message called buttercup. Repeat this again for Blossom. Now you've completed the code needed to select your player character, we need to program the game. Select the bubble sprite with your mouse. Add a when I receive event block to the empty scripts area and select bubbles from the drop down. Next, add a say for two seconds block from the looks section. You can change the text here to introduce bubbles. This is a good place to give instructions to the person playing the game on what to do. You can also change the length of time that the message appears for. Now add two wait one second control blocks and connect them to the script. Click on operators and select the pick random block and drop it inside the second wait block. This block will select a number between two values at random. So the completed block will wait for a random amount of time. You can change the values from one to 10 to any amount of time you like. I've chosen 0.2 to five for my game. Each time the game is played, we want to reset the timer to zero to calculate the reaction time of the player. Connect the reset timer block from the sensing section to the rest of your script. Then connect another say block to instruct the player to hit the spacebar on a keyboard. After, connect a wait until control block and then add a sensing key space press block inside the hexagon space on the wait until block. Your game code now waits for a random amount of time before instructing the player to hit spacebar. The time between saying hit spacebar and the player reacting and hitting the spacebar is what we're timing. That's the reaction time and that time is then recorded. What we want to do now is report that time back to the player so they can see how fast or slow they were. You can do this using a save for two seconds block and two join operator blocks. Place the first join block inside the say block. Replace the world text with the word seconds. Then add the second join block into the space where the text reads hello. Inside the new join block, replace hello text with your reaction time was and replace the world text with the timer sensing block. This is a complicated line to connect up, so do double check that you've got it right before moving on. It will join text with the reaction time of the player and report it back to the player through the say block. Now add the set time to zero variable block and place the timer sensing block where the value zero is. This will store the reaction time of the player inside the variable called time and display it on the game screen. Here you can also check the answer block to display the player's choice of character on the screen under time. With the game script completed, now is a good time to test that it works. Go ahead and click on the green flag to start. Then type bubbles into the input box. If your code is correct, you should be able to hit spacebar when instructed and have your reaction time reported back to you. What do you think might happen if I play the game again? Only this time I type buttercup into the input box at the start of the game. That's right, nothing, because we've only created the game script for bubbles. We need to copy the game script written for bubbles by right clicking on it and selecting duplicate and then paste it onto buttercup script area. We also need to remember to switch the when I receive message from bubbles to buttercup and replace the introductory text in the say block to introduce buttercup. Repeat this process again for Blossom too so you can complete the game. Test the game works for all of your characters by clicking on the green flag and ta-da! You've coded your very own Powerpuff Girls reaction game. That was amazing! Dude, you killed it! Thanks, guys! What else could you do with this game? How could you improve it and make it better? Could you add sounds? Could you add motion? I'd like to thank Cartoon Network for allowing me to use their assets in this video. Um, I'm really excited to see what kids do using the Powerpuff Girls on Scratch. 
My name is Carrie Ann, and you've been watching the Geek Girl Diaries. Go out and code and have some fun with the Powerpuff Girls. Thank <music> you.